more. Appreciate you hopping on another video to coach me up and the viewers up. I actually just hopped off a first conversation with a prospective customer. I typically kick these conversations off agenda, objectives, upfront contract. Unfortunately, all of my opportunities and deals that I'm working with, this is a good thing. I work with business partners. So sometimes when I hop on these calls, a business partner, another salesperson might kick that call off. This happened today, just before hitting record on this call, the rep didn't have an agenda, didn't have objectives, didn't have an upfront contract, and we were defaulted to the buyer's process on this call. Can you just walk me and the viewers through how you coach your students when you were a VP, how you coach your reps, how to kick off a first conversation with a prospective buyer, specifically that first discovery conversation? Sure. But do you want me to contextualize it based on your specific use case from today where you, the prospective buyer was on the call plus the partner or for the sake of the audience, maybe they're just talking with prospects? Just prospects. Yeah. So this is the first call, right? This would be the first call you've done with first them? First conversation. Yeah. Um, so the few few things um, that I'll mention, rapport building um, is obviously pretty important, but I don't think rapport building has to be about personal stuff. It could be about business um, and rapport building also shouldn't be forced. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, it's forced when someone's talking about the weather. Um, I was also literally listening to a, a sales call that I'm, one of my students I'm coaching and they were talking about the weather for a good three minutes and three minutes doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a lot. Um, it's like, oh, where are you based out of? Oh, the Miami, oh, what's the weather down there? Like, it's just like, Oh, yeah. so uh, that's shitty small talk rapport building. Uh, not that small talk is bad because uh, small talk over time leads to relationships, etc. cetera. But um, what I would recommend is, I think we talked about in the, our last session, but when you're doing research before the call around the prospect, around the industry, around the company, around the competitors, um, and you're going to their LinkedIn, maybe their, their, pro, their TikTok or their Instagram, if they have one, wherever your prospect lives and hangs out, that'll be based on your research. If you find something that you can speak to, whether it's something that you can relate to, like a commonality, maybe they love golfing or gol or they like bourbon or whatever it is, and you like it too, that could be a way to build a rapport. Um, if you couldn't find anything, but you found something that they posted about on LinkedIn, or um, you noticed something about their company that they recently raised $20 million in funding, whatever it is, you can build rapport on that. Um, so let's just say you speak to a VP of sales and you, you have nothing to talk about on a personal level. Um, but you did notice that they raised a ton of funding. What you could do is you could say something like, hey, Matt, um, by the way, like, imagine the call starts. Matt, yeah. appreciate you jumping on the call. By the way, I owe you a huge congrats because I saw your company just raised 20 million in funding. You must be excited and really swamped at the same time. That's a rapport build. Um, and you're calling out something that is not personal, but it's more business, but you can integrate the personal side because you're talking about how excited and busy he is at the same time or he or she is. Um, so that's a natural way to do it. So that's rapport building. <clears throat> you can't really set true frameworks to rapport building like mm -hmm. you can for a discovery because it has to be natural and organic. Um, so that's, let's put that aside. Okay. What I would always recommend on a, on a call is to do these three housekeeping rules um, is objective time check and agenda so an objective is essentially telling the prospect why you're there the time check is literally just making sure that you're mindful of their time and we'll role play this in a second okay. and then the agenda is telling the prospect what you're going to cover I, I don't know if we did this in our last call and if we did i'll just repeat it just in case but i think we did do this whatever have you ever been to have you ever had to go somewhere drive anywhere that you've never been to all the time. What, what do you do? The first thing that you do? Put Look it into up the address, put it into ways. Exactly. So we did talk about this. Okay. So though that's what setting the objective is and the agenda is. It's telling the prospect, why are we here? So we're going to X, y, we're, we're here to talk, talk about your challenges and to see if we can solve that problem. And I'll role play it exactly how that would sound. And what are we going to cover? That's the agenda. That's like putting your address into Google Maps or ways and it's spitting out the address and how to get there. So if we were to do this, like package this up in like a role play, you want to make sure that I'm going to repeat it again, because I think I went too in the weeds there for a second. 
when you're on the call with a prospect, you want to make sure that you're telling the prospect why you're there. You want to make sure that you're going to tell them what you're going to cover so they have a roadmap for the call, not just for you. Mm -hmm. And that would sound something like, imagine I build rapport with you already. So Matt, we built rapport. I just want to be mindful of your time. I see we have a, uh, our time is blocked up from 5.30 to 6 p.m. Um, do you have a hard stop on that hour or, or can you bleed over a little bit? You'll, you'll respond go, whatever. Go more. Yeah. Great. Go and, and one of the best gifts that I can give you, and I'll see if we, we can make it, if, if, if we end up covering exactly what you need to see and less time, I'm going to give you your time back because I know you got to go back and you just raised a ton of money and you're probably swamped. So I'll, I'll refer back to that report build. So that's time check. The goal today, today's call, Matt, really, is just to figure out a little bit more about some of the challenges that you may be experiencing and some of the goals you want to achieve and see if our company can help you solve that. And if we can, great. If we can, if we can't, then not a problem. I'll just refer you out to maybe another solution, another competitor. Um, does that sound okay? Sounds great. Cool. Um, and so if we can solve your problem, then what we will cover is... Um, we'll go through, I have a couple of questions to understand if we can't even solve your problem. And then what we'll do is we'll go through the product to, to show you exactly how to solve those pieces. We can do that in today's call. And then if it looks good, we'll cover what onboarding looks like and customer success and pricing and then next steps. I'll stay quiet a little bit. I'll wait for a response. Prospect says, great. Then I'll, I'll transition into my upfront contract. I'll say something like, and, and Matt, by the way, my only ask is if for whatever reason, I know we're not like, there's no perfect software out there, but for whatever reason, um, uh, I know if, if the pros if the product is going to work for you based on what you're telling me, then you're, you're obviously going to tell me, but my only ask is if for whatever reason, it, it doesn't fit what your needs, would you feel comfortable telling me that's my upfront contract? Got it. Got it. Got it. Awesome. So you're, you're talking next steps objective, confirming time, any hard stops that I should be aware of. Agenda, this is what we're going to cover. If we're a fit, great. If we're not, no worries whatsoever. I'll refer you out to some competitors that might be a better fit. And then you're going into that upfront contract. Yeah, but I like I like starting off the call, again, whether it's coming before the report build or after the report build, but I find it really important to include the objective of the call. Mm -hmm. The why are we here early on? Because that gives me permission to start asking my questions. Now, more being the sales coach that you are coaching account executives, account executives are having these conversations every single day. This is their primary job. What disconnects are you seeing between the amateur salespeople who are maybe just getting set up with you for coaching and the professional salespeople when kicking these calls off? I take it they probably don't have an agenda even prepared. What does that look like? Yeah, so I would... I would add another layer to this. You have amateurs really experienced and somewhere in the middle. They're, they're, it's like the transition from amateur to slightly becoming experienced. So the amateur ones awesome. aren't even doing these things. They're just, they're maybe asking one question and then, uh, you know, maybe asking like, Hey, what if you, they're just going straight for like the demo. They're not even trying to build a rapport really. And if they are trying to build rapport, it's really forced. It's someone told them to ask this question. It's, it's nothing, there's nothing natural about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they just forget to like set the tone for the call. Those are, are what the amateurs are doing. So they're, they're not doing the time checks. They're not setting the objective. They're not setting the agenda for the call. The trend, I'll, I'll, and I'll go, I'll skip the middle for a second. The really seasoned reps are doing all those things, but they're doing it in a very natural, organic way. The, the middle tier folks, the ones that are not amateur, but they're not yet super seasoned, they're setting the objective and the time check and the agenda, but it sounds really templated. It sounds like they're following some sort of sales, sales methodology. You wrote about that today on LinkedIn. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the problem yeah. with a lot of sales methodologies is that you sound like a sales methodology. You don't yeah. sound like Matt that's asking a question out of, of from a place of genuine curiosity. You sound like Matt that was asking these questions because that's what you were taught to ask. Yeah. And, I, and I'm curious what your thoughts are on this, because I, I completely agree with everything you just said. Around the upfront contract, it seems to me that this, maybe in the past two to three years, is a new concept. I don't know, more were you and your reps, when you were a VP back in the day, were you guys having an upfront contract within your agendas, or is this a new thing to add in? I wasn't. Um, okay. My sales strategies approach 
evolved over time and they're mm -hmm. still evolving when I'm hearing something I'm like, oh, I like the way that sounds. Um, I believe the upfront contract came from the Sandler methodology. Now I didn't study Sandler methodology. I didn't officially study it. I just heard about it. I'm like, oh, someone said that that's a Sandler method. I'm like, oh, I like it. I like the way that sounds. And so I've just incorporated it into my my sales talk track. Um, I'll, I'll, I will make this sort of like disclaimer that if you're selling to a salesperson that's relatively, you know, especially in the B2B SaaS space, pulling the upfront contract is really obvious. They know exactly what you're doing. Um, and so you may get a response like, oh, I know what you're doing. That's Sandler. That's an upfront contract. <clears throat> so you can either play stupid, which I wouldn't recommend, or you can agree and be like, yeah, it looks like, yeah, it isn't that exactly it. Like, I'm so glad you recognize that. What do you think? Sort of joke around with it. <clears throat> or you don't ask the upfront contract in the upfront contract way. Like you find a way where you can ask it in your own words. But either way, I don't think you should hide a, hide from from it. If you're selling to a salesperson, I think you should be pretty candid uh, 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 about about what you're doing, about your intent. That's why setting an objective is so important. Um, the, my my goal today, Matt, my goal today, VP of Sales, <clears throat> I just want to know if we can solve your problem. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to sell you. I'm here to help you. Because if I try to sell you something that isn't a fit, yeah, I may be great at sales and you may you may end up signing up. But if I lied because I was just trying to sell you and you use our product and you realize it's not a fit, you'll cancel, leave a bad review, and there goes my reputation. So it's not in my best interest. And more, I know we covered this on the last video. For the people who didn't watch that video, and guys, if you didn't see our first conversation around the mm -hmm. mindset going into a first conversation with a prospective buyer, you can click on that video above our header here to check that video out, and I would definitely suggest checking it out. We went through, or you went through the concept, if there are clawbacks, for a salesperson, you were including a specific word track. I believe it was after the upfront contract. Was that correct, Moore? Um, let me think about that for a second. I mean, I definitely did include. I'm trying to think what that was. I think to prevent it, clawbacks. To prevent clawbacks, correct. That was it. There's a lot of ways you can do that, but um, it, it could have been something like it's not in my best interest to um uh, sell you something that isn't a fit because if you decide that you sign up and it, you find out later that it's not a fit um then you'll cancel and just to be candid and sort of lift the curtain part of my job the way i get compensated is to bring in new business that's a fit for the company if it's not a fit um then whatever commission i make i get uh it gets taken away it's called clawback so prospect my intention is generally to help you and to help you at the that's same time it. to make it that advantageous that right there is what I need to start adding into my kickoff for my conversations because that piece right there, that happens to me. I get callbacks. I need to start adding that into to my agenda. So I'm adding that right below the upfront contract. Yeah, I mean, so add it wherever you feel that it naturally fits within your discovery. If you're, if you're, okay. if you're forcing it, because sometimes the conversation takes a different direction, right? Like maybe the prospect says something and you have just, it sort of, deviates from like the natural flow of things and you're like, all right, I got to ask this question. So let me go back to that question. Just make sure it's coming in naturally. So sometimes like I may not, sometimes I may not do the upfront contract because it just doesn't fit the conversation. It's not the appropriate time to do it. So I skip, do, I, I'll skip it sometimes. Um, I definitely do the time check all, all the time. I like to do the objective all the time. Um, but sometimes I like to, I've done it before where I built some rapport. I go straight into my discovery. I, I didn't do the objective. I didn't do the agenda. And before I do the demo, I do the objective and I do the agenda. So we'll go, it'll be something like, oh, Matt, I love rapport, rapport, yeah. rapport, rapport, rapport. By the way, curious, what led you to book a demo with me today? And then I go and naturally go into the discovery. Yeah. I've gotten my information. And then I'd say something like, okay, I appreciate, I appreciate you sharing that feedback. And by the way, the goal of today's call really is just to learn a little bit more about your problems so you can see if we can solve it. And if we can, great. Um, if not, I'll, I'll refer you out. And if it is a fit, then I'll set the agenda. I will show you the demo and I'll show you this and we'll come, talk about this. Sound good? Cool. And and by the way, my only ask is, so you'll notice my discovery went for, it was report, discovery, objective, agenda, upfront contract. Initially, this video, it was report, objective, agenda, upfront contract, discovery. So you, it. it works both ways. It just has to be very natural few different ways to do it. Would you recommend for newer reps in an account executive role watching this video to first start with 
time check, objective, agenda, upfront contract before they deviate and do rapport building, go right into uh, discovery? Yeah, it's like uh, yeah. when I, I, I used to play varsity basketball, um, but before I did, I was like a really crappy basketball player. And so I would train, but I would train like watching and one videos and like all the mixtapes. Okay. And I, and someone comes like, what are you what are you doing? You're you're trying to do all these tr trick dribbles and trick shots. You don't even have the fundamentals in place. And so he said, do the fundamentals first, get comfortable with that, then you can start adding in your own, you know, pizzazz. And so my recommendation for any new one, any new reps coming through, is don't try to do the time check, the objective, the upfront contract, the in general, all at once. Pick one of those things and do that consistently until it's second nature. Because then the problem is you're going to try to remember all those things and you, you'll miss one. And then you'll remember on the call, you're like, oh, crap, I forgot to ask that. And then that will throw your game off and then you'll just start mumbling. It happened actually Ooh. earlier on this particular call, what we did today, this real-time call. Early on the call, I found myself mumbling and getting – I found myself – the way I was explaining was really confusing because I was thinking about something that I made a mistake on when you asked me a question. I was like, I shouldn't have said that. And I got caught in it and then I was just – dumping diarrhea out of my mouth because I was trying to catch up and, and like pull back from it. So my recommendation is pick one thing, pick the one thing that you think would be the important time check. All right. Start asking on the call. Hey, prospect, I just want to be mindful of your time. I see that we have uh, 30 minutes blocked out until 6 PM. Um, do you have a hard stop at that time or can you bleed over? Do that to the point where you can do it in your sleep, That's then start okay. adding other areas of the uh, opener. Baby steps. Got to start steps. with baby steps, especially when you're just getting started out. Any final thoughts here, more with how to kick these calls off? Um, yeah, I mean, so I, I'd recommend um, writing out some sort of framework or playbook um, if you're a sales rep um, into your CRM or having like a sticky note, mm -hmm. like having a sticky note for discovery, a sticky note for demo, a sticky note for a report, et cetera, et cetera. So I have a sticky note for like, in, call it intro, call intro, yeah. call intro, time check. Objective, uh, uh, agenda, upfront contract, if you want. Yeah, and this is actually, you guys probably can't see this, but this is one of my agendas, upfront contracts. And sometimes I will literally show the prospect that I came prepared and read that off. I mean, I've done 70 of these conversations this year, so it's natural for me. When I was just starting out, I would show up to the calls and read that, but it does show that you're prepared, ready for the call, you have a good game plan, and you're good to go, but... Moore, I cannot thank you enough for hopping in this video and coaching us all up on how to kick off sales conversations. Guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Let us know what types of demo, discovery, closing questions you have, and more will come in here and drop some knowledge and coach us all up. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified every Tuesday and Thursday when we post new content on this channel. But more. Can't thank you enough, man, for being a current guest and hopping on the channel. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks.